In 2015, there were three Futures tournaments in Bulgaria. That was the year I played my first ever Futures tournament, while for Alex, it was the last time he played a Futures tournament in Bulgaria. I was 18 and had just finished my first year in college, while Alex was 16 and was fighting his way up the ITF Junior rankings. In 2016, there were four Futures tournaments in Bulgaria. The first one was in Suzopol on Hard, where Group 3 of the Davis Cups Europe Zone was held in April of this year, while the remaining three were on clay. How many Futures tournaments though were there this year? Well, the answer to that is just one. The tournament in Suzopo was the only one that remained. Why, you might ask? Well, there's a number of possible explanations, but the one that's most likely is that the ITF's increase in the minimum required prize money at the Futures level from $10,000 last year to $15,000 this year scared off the tournament sponsors at the other clubs. Earning an extra dollar or two never hurt the needy aspiring pro, but then again someone does have to provide the paycheck. If you held three tournaments last year, your total investment in prize money would have been $30,000. If you hold the same number of tournaments this year, you'd have to pulverize 45k. That's like investing in a fourth tournament by last year's standards. So who wants to pay that? No one? Well, then what it is. At the Bulgaria F1 Futures in Suzopol, Alex was in luck. The Bulgarian Tennis Federation jump-started Alex's campaign by granting him a wild card into the main draw. As chance would have it, he would be playing against another wild card, the 17-year-old Joshua Rose of Great Britain, ranked 258 in the ITF Junior rankings, who was also hunting that elusive first ATP point. As the two candidates for points stood for the first set, Alex was first to feel the pressure of expectations and let his serve slip to go down an early break at 2 love. But Rose on his part wasn't ready to accept such an early sacrifice just yet and promptly dropped his own serve in return. Rose and Alex insecurely chased one another until 5-all, when Rose's persistence and Alex's abundant errors slammed the door shut on the first set in the Brits' favour, 7-5. The second set began in a stalemate, with neither player backing down on the serve for the first six games. Brodka. Then, in the critical seventh game, Rose made his move, confiscating Alex's serve once more, a blow which proved to be fatal. The 17-year-old Joshua Rose took his first points here in Bulgaria, 
seven five six four while for Alex there was no end in sight the drought of ATP points. Get in! Get! Get! On the bright side though, Alex prolonged his stay by teaming up with his 20-year-old compatriot, Gabriel Donov, ranked 965 in singles. In the first round of the doubles tournament, there was an all-Bulgarian clash as Donsky and Donov on Yuri Khachatryan and Vence Ivanov, neither of whom were ranked. Donsky and Donov made light work of the opposition in the first set, sparing them just one game. The second was slightly more competitive, but not much more, as Donsk and Donov leisurely got business done in two sets, 6-1, 6-2. Yet another opportunity to finally get one point. But before Donsk and Donov could make it a reality, they would have to outmaneuver the number one seed from Romania, Victor Mugurel Ananestopu and Victor Vlad Cornea, ranked at 336 and 301 respectively in doubles. The Romanians proved to be tough customers in the first set as they commanded the points from the net. The Bulgarian team surrendered the first set 6-3 to the neighbors from the north. but Alex and his partner weren't ready to chalk their doubles campaign just yet. Donsky and Donov came back with a vengeance to demolish Ananestopol and Cornea 6-1 in the second set. The deciding match tiebreaker rocked violently back and forth between the two teams, with the Romanians striking first to go up 4-1. Gonski and Donov then made a heroic effort to turn the tables to gain the upper hand at 6-5. But catastrophe struck like lightning twice in the same place. And Alex missed out on yet another opportunity to enter the ATP rankings. Ananya Stoppel and Cornea prevailed 6-3-1-6-10-8. Well, that could have gone better. Anyway, here in Operation Liftoff, we recently reached a milestone. We recently reached 1,000 subscribers. Bro. What? We hit 1K. Really? Yes. 1,000. That's a huge thing for this channel because it means that 1,000 more people uh, know a little bit more about what it's like to compete at the futures level, the beginning, the entry level of, uh, of the ATP World Tour. And what's, what's fantastic is that a lot of you are actually young players who compete at a high level and are interested in knowing what it might be like if you gave it a go at the Pro Tour. So we're really happy to be able to share our experience uh, with you. Because nowadays on the ATP World Tour what you see most is uh, basically coverage of uh, only the ATP uh, tour level events which are basically reserved for only the top 150 players in the world but the fact of the matter is that from first place to last place um, each and every player has gone through uh, the beginning phase of uh, of their journey as, as pros which happens right here on the well on the futures level and it's one of mo one of the most difficult yet exciting uh, phases on the on the journey to becoming a successful pro
there are other players who really want to share their experience, but they just don't uh, don't have the opportunity to reach out to more people. So we're trying our best to uh, to really get this uh, info out there. And uh, again, we just want to thank everybody for uh, who's been supporting us. We love uh, we love reading your feedback and your comments. It helps us get through some of the tough moments, both on court and off court. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way. Up.